topic with a discussion on linear transformation. And I'm going to share the whiteboard with you, first of all, where I'm going to do a bit mathematics on linear transformation. Okay, so let's see what is this all about. Just a minute. You want to say something? Avishek CACB has raised his hand. If you want to say something, then you write in the chat box. Uh, just a minute. <clears throat> okay. So <clears throat> let me start. Let me start the today's, uh, the today's topic. My topic is uh, linear transformation. And it is very interesting topic and also very important in the sense that with the help of this topic, this particular topic is the gateway to matrices. And therefore it is also very important. Very, very important. Okay, for gate examination. When we talk about two sets, suppose we have two sets. This is a set A, set A, and this is a set B. Okay, if we have two sets, we study the set operations and video is off my okay so can you hear me yeah if we have two sets capital a and capital b and when we learn about the set operation after that in the advanced section we actually uh, try to know whether we can define any function from set a and set b set a to set b Okay, we try to define a function from set A to set B and where this set A is called the domain of the function from which the value of the, uh, which, is, which is supposed to be taken as input inside the function is considered. Okay, so we consider X over here and this particular set B, it becomes core domain and if you consider a subset of that, say for example, this, we consider this subset to be range. Range is the subset of the codomain. So we define a function, we try to define a function from a particular set to a particular, to another set that we do. Similar is the case with vector spaces also. So we have learned the vector spaces. We have got to know what are uh, ve uh, vector additions and scalar multiplication. And we also, Srimanthi, you want to say something? You have raised your hand. Uh, if you want to say something, okay, just a minute. You write in the chat. So if we, uh, since we have come to know of the vector spaces, now these vector spaces, uh, we have got to know what are these op the what are the operations of vector space, what are vector addition, what are vector scalar multiplication, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, also we uh, have come to know that uh, many other aspects like uh, what are the subspaces and uh, the spanning set and basis. Many things we have come to know about the vector spaces. Now, once we know the vector spaces, if we consider two vector spaces say one vector space is capital V and another vector space is uh, capital W, okay? Then also we can define a function. We can define a function from the vector space V to vector space W. We can define a function, okay? And that function, that function is actually called, that function is actually called 
linear transformation. So linear transformation is actually a kind of function which is defined from a particular vector space to another vector space. So how is it defined? Since you have, since you have gone through the book, okay, the definition, the chapter, so probably you know that uh, if we have two sets, if we have two vector spaces, if V and W be two vector spaces, V and W be two vector spaces, over this particular part is very important, over the same field, over the same field, capital F, this part is very important. The two vector, if you want to define a function from a vector space to another vector space, the field considered must be the same. Okay, so this part, I am going to put a star over here, over the same field F, then we define a function, then we define, let us not call it as a function, let us call it as a transformation. We define a transformation, a linear transformation, a linear transformation capital T from V to W. Srimanthi, you want to say something? You write in the chat box. What do you want to say? What do you want to say? You are raising your hand. Shall I continue? Unlock the meeting. Oh, why? I have... Okay. Yeah, I have unlocked the meeting. Okay. So, uh, then we define or define a linear transformation T from V to W. Okay. If, if, let me write in the next page. If for all for all x comma y belonging to v and c belonging to f for all x y belonging to v and c belonging to f we have the following what what rules we have as per the definition given t of x plus y it will become tx plus ty and t of cx this becomes c into tx t of x plus y that that becomes uh, tx plus ty and t of cx is equal to c into tx so that is actually if this this actually holds then we call the transformation to be linear so you 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 remember one thing probably i probably you do not know this particular thing you will be notified about the test later on not the, not this sunday next week i shall notify you don't worry do not ask me any any questions, any extra questions right now, because actually I am extremely tired because I attended a meeting just now. So actually I have not actually set up right now for taking this particular class, but since I have told you that I am going to, I, I would be taking a class. So just I'm taking the class. Let me set, let me uh, actually set for, give me some time. Let me set with this current situation, current system, actually, Right now, my, I'm mentally very tired. So therefore you do not ask me extra question. Just listen to me what I'm saying. Otherwise I will forget the connection. I will just, uh, everything will be haphazard. If you continuously asking question and ask questions and distract me, okay? My, and meeting, my meeting is not locked. Anybody can join. Ritesh is not Ritesh is not in the waiting room. Anybody can join. Actually, I am not actually. Okay, just a minute. Okay, I am letting in. So, let me start once again afresh. 
if we have two vector spaces v and w then if we can define a function from v to w these two are vector spaces one extra condition is there these two vector spaces must be defined over the same field capital f then we can define a function from v to w we can define a function from v to w uh, and we are naming this function as capital t this function will be called linear transformation this function will be called linear transformation if the following conditions are satisfied if the following conditions are satisfied so probably you do not know one thing that when we consider a definition definitions are always both way true we do not write the word if and only if but a definition is both way true this means that if we consider if we if i say that capital t is a function which is linear transformation these conditions will hold or if you say that we have a function with us which has the properties like this then also i can con consider that this function is a linear transformation so if these conditions are true the function is a linear transformation if a function is linear transformation these conditions will hold okay so definitions are always if and only if case type of case so this is the definition of linear transformation okay now after this you can see that there are certain properties which are given the property number 1 let me write it the property number 1 is if t is uh, linear if t is linear then t of 0 bar is equal to zero bar now i want to discuss this a little bit first of all i want to discuss this what does it mean actually probably you have not understood what act, the actual meaning of this particular thing so what does it actually mean what does it actually mean <clears throat> i have defined a function from the vector space v to vector space w okay and that that function is uh, de denoted by capital t now according to the definition it is gi given that if i input zero bar zero vector inside the transformation it takes you to the zero vector zero vector is actually being taken to a zero vector by the linear transformation but what is not mentioned properly in the book okay that i am going to tell you is that this zero vector is actually the zero vector of this zero vector is actually the zero vector of the vector space v so we let us call it as zero v okay and that zero vector is the zero vector of the vector space w this is not mentioned in the book zero vector of w okay so let us name it as zero w bar so actually by this rule they actually mean that t of the zero vector of v is being transformed to zero vector of w zero vector of t is being trans transformed to zero vector of w okay since we are taking all the elements from v to w by the transformation capital t so this point is also very important okay next in question point number 2 it is given that t is linear t is linear if and only if if and only if t is linear if and only if t of cx plus y is equal to c into tx plus ty c into tx plus ty for all xy for all x y belonging to capital v this is a kind of theorem you can say this is a kind of theorem which helps us to prove different problems i am going to prove this particular theorem first of all okay so let us try to prove this particular theorem okay proof now i am actually by 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 solving this particular theorem by proving this particular result i wanted to show you how to solve how to prove a theorem 
okay because this linear algebra is all about theorems and you have to deal with that many many theorems are there there and many important results are there which often help help us to solve problems okay so i am trying to prove it first of all so we are going to discuss case 1 why i am going to discuss case 1 it is because this term is there if and only if because it is both way true this theorem is both way, both way true if t is linear then this is going to hold if this is going to hold then t is linear so i am going to prove one after another my case one my assumption is t is linear my assumption is t is linear when we say that t is linear immediately we know immediately we know that in this case in this case for all x y belonging to v t of x plus y should be equal to tx plus ty okay and for all x belonging to v and c belonging to f t of cx should be equal to c into tx okay that we know because we have assumed that t is linear now <clears throat> let us consider the left hand side of the theorem uh, what is what is left hand side of the result that t of i have to consider consider t of cx plus y i have to consider t of cx plus y so we are going to use we are going to get the right hand side of this result by applying these rules now you see since uh, x belongs to v and uh, v is a vector space v is a vector space over f over f so for c belonging to f c into x is also belonging to capital v cx is also a vector and by our choice y is already in the vector space capital v so we can consider these two elements cx and y as vectors of the vector space capital v okay so i can apply this rule over here we can treat cx as x we can treat y as y so if i apply this rule because t is linear i can write it as t into cx plus t in, sorry not t into cx t of cx plus t of y okay now again you see that since t is linear t of cx is equal to c into tx so i can apply this rule in this case so we can write is write it as c into tx plus ty and you see this is your right hand side this is your right hand side so we have got left hand side equal to right hand side and result has been proved so if t is linear we have actually got another formula which is given by this we have which have, which is given by this this is actually a formula is you can use it to solve problems as they have uh, used it to solve problems given in example 1 which is solved over here they have tried to use it over here over there then next i am going to discuss case 2 in case 2 what i am going to write carefully observe that let us assume for all x comma y for all x comma y belonging to capital v and c belonging to capital f this condition t of cx plus y is equal to c into tx c into tx plus ty this result is true suppose this is my assumption this entire thing is is my assumption what i am going to show is that t is linear i am going to show that t is linear to show that t is linear that t is linear okay if i want to show that t is linear then actually i wanted if i what 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 uh, rules we have in our hand to show that a transformation is linear 
we need to show separately that t of x plus y equal to t x plus t y and t of c x equal to c into t x. So let's see whether these conditions can come from the given assumption or not. Okay, since c is any scalar, c is any scalar from the field F, from the field F, let us select C to be the scalar one, the unit scalar, which we call it, call as unit scalar. You already know it from the definition of vector space, property number VS5. So since it is actually this particular rule is actually being hold for all the possible values of x, y, and c. So from this, I can write it as by putting c equal to unit vector, I can write it as c uh, t of 1 into x plus y. And since t of cx plus y is equal to c into tx plus ty, so I can write it as 1 into tx plus ty. But you see that uh, since X <clears throat> belongs to capital V and uh, TX belongs to capital W, TX is also a vector space. Uh, TX is also a vector since W is a vector space. TS is a vector. And therefore, and therefore, Unit, unit scalar multiplied the by the vector will be equal to the vector itself, property Vs5. So I can write it as 1 into Tx, I can write it as Tx. So it becomes Tx plus Ty. So this condition is actually being satisfied. So one part is done. Second, since this condition is actually holding for all, all vectors and scalars, so let us now choose, let us now take let us now take uh, y to be zero vector, zero vector of w, or vector space V, zero vector of V. And therefore we get, therefore we get T into Cx plus Y. This becomes T into Cx plus zero vector, zero vector of V. Okay, I can, I can write it as zero V bar for clarity. And since uh, zero, bar, zero bar is the zero vector of V, so T of Cx plus zero bar will become T of, uh, Cx. Why? Since V is a vector space and zero B, V bar is the zero vector, zero vector of zero vector of V. So for all X in V, X plus zero bar V is equal to X. And also we know, also we know CX belongs to V is a vector. This implies Cx plus zero bar V is equal to Cx. Okay, so we get this and also from the uh, also after this we can we can uh, consider uh, what are the conditions given T of Cx equal to C into Tx plus Ty. So we have also by our assumption, we can write it as T of Cx plus Y is given as C into Tx plus Ty. Sorry. Ty. This is given. This is given. And therefore, for our choice, for our choice of Y equal to zero, B, zero bar, zero vector of the vector space V, 
t of 0 v bar, I mean t of y, if I write t of y, this becomes what? You already know it from property 1, that this is the 0 vector of w. This is the 0 vector of w. And therefore, and therefore t of cx plus 0 v bar, this becomes c into tx by our assumption plus t of 0 v bar. And since t of 0 v bar is 0, 0 vector of w, we can write it as t of c into tx plus 0 w bar. Okay. Tx, since w is a vector space and tx is a vector in w and 0 bar w is the is the zero vector is the zero vector of w therefore tx plus 0 w bar is equal to tx and so if i multiply this this becomes uh, actually uh, tx plus 0 bar is actually tx, not only this, not only this, c of c into tx is also belonging to w, is, an, is a vector. And so this implies c into tx plus zero bar w is also equal to c into tx. Okay. And therefore this becomes c into tx, c into tx. So we have to write, uh, we have to write it clearly. Therefore, T of Cx plus Y, this becomes this. And we get ultimately what we get. We get uh, uh, T of Cx plus Y, it, this becomes uh, by putting Y equal to zero, zero vector of the vector space, we get this. And therefore this implies T of Cx is equal to C into Tx. T of Cx from here. Okay, so we get the second property. The second property of, of, for T to be linear is also satisfied. And therefore, ultimately, we can say, we can say that the transformation T is linear transformation, is a linear transformation. Why have I shown this particular proof? I was actually trying to show you the logical approach by which you have to proceed. The logical approach, not many problems are actually, we, I do not find time for solving many problems in the classroom. So this by this problem, I wanted to show you, first of all, that this property, this property, how to prove this property, because you can, this, sometimes this property can come as problem. And also I wanted to show you what is the logic by which logic you must proceed to solve it. Okay. So it is very important. Now you can use this particular property that if T is linear, you can use this particular property that if T is linear, then T of Cx plus Y equal to C into Tx plus Ty. This property can be used to solve problems. Okay. That, that, that they have done in the book in example one. Example one is given. Example one is actually uh, has been solved uh, in, the, in the book. The second, uh, the third property which they have mentioned is if T is linear, if T is linear, then T of X minus Y is equal to T X minus ty for all xy for all x comma y in v i i hope that you will be able to solve it just you take c equal to minus one okay then you will be because uh, one is a scalar quantity and since uh, it is a scalar quantity it is an element of the field and if it is an element of the field it has a additive inverse so minus one is also there so you can multiply by minus one and you apply the linear tra transformations property, then that result will come. It's very easy result. You can do it by yourself. 
and the fourth one also in the fourth result it is given that t is linear t is linear if and only if if and only if t is linear if and only if for x1 comma x2 dot 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 xn belonging to capital v and a1 a2 dot 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 an belonging to capital f t of summation i goes from 1 to n ai xi this is equal to summation i goes from 1 to n ai t into t of xi what does it mean if i expand it it means that t of a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus dot 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 plus a n x n this is equal to a1 t of x1 plus a2 t of x2 plus dot 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 plus a n t of x n this result is actually the generalization of the property 2 which we have just proved for solving problem that t is a linear a transformation will be given to you and you are supposed to show that it is a linear transformation i shall be always using this particular property to solve it solve that uh, the thing is linear in the book sometimes they have used this particular property that uh, t is linear if t of cx plus y equal to c into tx plus ty i am going to use this property to solve to solve that particular transformation is a linear transformation and you see as, as a special case as a special case to this particular property as a special case to this particular property if i take just two points x1 comma x2 belonging to the vector space capital v so that so that uh, t of x uh, x1 uh, and t of x2 belonging to the vector space uh, w okay then uh, t is linear t is linear if there exist scalar if there exist scalar a1 a2 belonging to capital f such that such that a1 t of a1 x1 plus a2 x2 is equal to a1 t of x1 plus a2 t of x2 i am going to use this special case to solve problems special case to property 4 and if you want to prove property 4 in that particular case you have to you have to use if you want to prove property 4 you have to use uh, property number 2 to prove it because property 2 has already been proved and this is the generalization of the property 2 okay so uh, and one other two transformations are very important which is uh, actually considered here two important transformations two important transformations which play a very vital role in uh, this particular chapter if we consider if we consider the vector space v and w to be same let us call it as v and we define we define a transformation we define a transformation we define a transformation as i of iv i is the identity transformation identity i stands for identity transformation defined on v we define the transformation v to v by i v of x is equal to x for all x belonging to capital v then this transformation is also linear transformation this transformation is also a linear transformation okay and also another transformation is there 
if we define a transformation by t0 and it is from v to w and defined as defined as t0 of x is equal to 0 bar it is not mentioned in the uh, book but i am i am writing it as 0 0 vector of w that is 0 bar w for all x in v this transformation is called zero transformation this transformation is called zero transformation and it is also linear this is also linear so these are the two very important transformations which are there in the which has been which have been defined in the book this this class is going to end let us join in the new new class and then i'm going to continue with problems okay